Hey guys, this is Alexander Williamson with The Secret History Living Inside of Your Aquarium, and today we are going to talk a little bit about guppy genetics. So, I want to talk about what a strain of guppy is, and what the difference between a strain and a phenotype or style um, of guppy would be. So, first, some let's get some terms straight. So, phenotype is how a guppy looks, um, or how anything looks. Uh, it is the f- outward appearance. So um, your Persian cat has a phenotype and your tabby cat has a has a phenotype, but their genotype may be very similar. They may be the same species, uh, Felis domesticus. So that would be... Uh, so phenotype is looks, genotype is uh, species, but then also you can tell the difference between... Um, various traits genetically and you can actually tell the difference between um like each individual with genes as well so when you have guppies mixing them together with anything other than a male and a female of a certain breed um or strain is not a good idea it's it's uh well i mean if you want to to keep a strain so if you buy so I bought this Japanese blue endler, and it ha- it's a Japanese blue endler guppy hybrid mix, and it has yellow lyre tails and a purple body, which I hope you can see. So I bought that and was told that uh, three or four of these females were also the same species by an unknowing uh worker at the at the little local fish shop well turns out that it's not the same females they're something else and they produced almost entirely only females uh except for one male who had dumbo ears and was definitely a guppy so it was some other thing altogether i'd been breeding this japanese blue for two months three months almost, before they got old enough to realize, oh, they have nothing in common. Like, it's not just a quirk to work out with the tail or whatever. Like, they don't look the same. So the this is one tank I have going right now. So I scrapped the Endler, uh, Blue Japanese Endler slash Guppy project, and last night I picked up this beautiful male that has an iridescent tail and you probably can't see it under this light but he also has an iridescent green body and then uh, i also picked up a female that is supposed to be of his type with a green tail now i don't necessarily care if they're of a type because they're all kind of in the same color range and i'm curious to see I'm going to let them breed it out, so to speak, and let the males kind of breed amongst themselves and and create a new strain. So to do that, you need to stabilize the strain. So a strain, in theory, has predictable traits. So it's not just going to, you can't, you won't just have two guppies mix and all of a sudden you have a red guppy. Um, There are mutations among fish, subtly usually, like oh, it has a red spot on it, so let's breed that, and more and more you'll get more red spots. But you're not going to, with an established strain, some of them will only have guppies that look pretty much uh, spot on, whether that's defined the the species or, uh, uh, sorry, not the species, the, uh, the strain is defined by a delta tail or a split tail or... Um, you know, Dumbo ears, which are big pectoral fins, or a certain color combo, they usually fall within that parameter that's given for a type, just like a dog or a cat. So this one will probably take five to ten generations, which they have babies every 30 days. The babies really take a month to two months uh, to be able to tell what's going on. Even though they can get pregnant, I can't select them. So I usually will separate them for the second month. So when they start to get to this stage, um, you can sex them and you can separate them. I can leave the males in the tank, or I mean take the males out of the tank, leave the females. Any female that's left in the tank will then breed uh, 
with these males who are my three test subjects kind of thing. And then hopefully they'll have children and those females will then breed so that we'll get a little bit of both male lines in there. So that's how that tank's going to work. And then I don't have to sweat dealing with juggling guppies. So over in this tank right now, we've got a new fella who has a very nice flame tail. Uh, this is a fire and ice cobra guppy. Um, the ice is less pronounced and it actually has a slight green tint to it. And that's okay with me. I am okay with that. I will allow that to um, breed with any of the spare guppies that I have. Any cold guppies will come into here and will end up in here and there'll be the the oddballs with flame tails that kind of go with some of the red in this tank. Now you'll also notice that some of my tetras have ick right now. So probably came from a guppy. And this one up here needs to be quarantined. And when they have ick, you can tell they get so sick that they'll just literally fall right into your net like that. So I'm going to set this one aside on top of the tank to uh, to put it aside into the, another little pen away from everything. So now these pens have water exchange. And so then we have a rainbow-tailed uh, male in here. And this is another cobra skin rainbow male. Let's get that to focus. Cobra skin rainbow male. And there is a cobra skinned... A uh, female that also has a pretty cool tail, if we can find it. She's in here. So she's in with other females. All these other females are very plain, and I keep them set aside knowing that they came from a plain bl bluish variety from that other tank over there. Sorry, that's not in focus. Over there. And so then that way I know I can select these older females and kind of rotate out as the next ones are getting older. And that way they're only like five or six in a pen for a month or something like that. And same with these flame tail orange males. They will be mating with probably some of these random females and then some will go back. So then we'll still have the fire and ice thing going on since these ones have really plain tails. And then in this tank, we have... So I got tired of having to put males and female guppies in completely different tanks. And then beyond that, you have to put them... Here's a better shot of this one down here now that it's in the light. Um, so beyond keeping males and females separate, it's really hard to know what females came from which guppy unless they are a strain that actually has the females have a cool look to them. Sorry, that's way zoomed in. So this strain here, the female actually has a more uh, fancy tail than the male. And so the males look fine too. They're not super bright or anything, but I'm going to let them stay together because the, uh, the female has such a pronounced tail and uh, pectoral fins of color that that will then allow me to intermix their babies longer. And that, again, that won't be a true strain because I've intermixed their genetics. So that will be more of a type of guppy that tends to throw a certain other type of guppy. So we've got four pens here. We've got a tank there. This being a whole space that they'll be moving into soon. Um, the ones as the adult, I'll do a tank of adult males and adult females. Now down here is another tank that I can put my uh, fry of guppies in and can hold them in. But I don't keep them for more than a month in here because this is also my shrimp tank. And I've got rock piles back there, so the shrimps can hide out, and, you know, five or six guppies will only do so much damage, especially small ones. The adults can gobble up quite a few. They can still live together, but they can gobble up quite a few. 
So now these are shrimp that didn't make the mix while we're at this tank, but these are also containers like I will be taking this container and selling it off to the local fish store as will this mated and buried couple of uh, Sakura painted fire cherry shrimp. Uh, so I'm doing this same game that I'm doing with all of these uh, guppies and endlers. I'm doing with shrimp. So this is the blue shrimp tank. Uh, you know, this is the red shrimp tank. And there's a couple oddball orange ones in there. But the painted fire always stay there or in that tank. And then all the other colors, the, uh, the blacks and and browns, chocolates, and natural colors stay in the, the far tank, and a lot of them actually get eaten. But in this tank, so we have an actual true strain, which is a Japanese variant of the tiger endler, and it is more of a leopard endler at this point. Uh, it still has stripes, but it also has dots, so it's almost like an ocelot or a, you know, cheetah or something. Uh, it's not quite leopard spot as in like dot 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 and it's not solid stripes but it has this really cool ice blue flame spade tail that i really love and i haven't seen anywhere else and so i have taken these two males and these two females who i am very sure are of the same species and breed so a female endler and a male endler right there and then these are um pseudogills uh Forktails flying around there, males and females. So this is just guppies and forktails right now and some shrimp. So there's like two males and four females. And then there's three female forktails and two males. And this tank is going to be getting rescaped. So I don't know. Do you guys like this tank? Do you like how it looks? I don't think it looks bad by any means, but I'm thinking about putting a big uh, aquascape display up in here centrally. Um, and yeah, oh, and I forgot there's gobies in here too, which uh, I have another video about. So in any case, that's what's going on in the guppy end of my world. And I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, and let you know how I'm breeding them, how the genetics work. Now, different traits, you can't always tell what is a dominant trait and what's a recessive trait or th like as clear as that. But if you see a trait pop up over and over, then you get a pretty good idea. Um, this is not the strongest male in his body, but his tail has the strongest trait. And since uh, the tail is identical on these two males... I selected them because I care most about the tail because I can't find any other ones with this tail right now. And I can only find the female. I, I can find the females and I don't know what, you know, maybe they'll produce babies with those tails. Maybe not. But if they breed with these males, hopefully they will. And I got them as very, very young fish that have not bred before. Smaller than this one here. This is the newest addition. Where'd she go? Right there. Um, <clears throat> so, that should help inform a little bit of what's going on with with uh, the genetics is that that tail should last. I can always go buy another uh, tiger or leopard endler and then mix that with those babies once that that tail trait has been established. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. If you're into guppies, I'll be talking about guppies more, some scientific stuff. Uh, there's a video already on here about the history of guppies, where they come from, wh who discovered them, or who they're named after, I should say, and his life story, which is kind of an oddball story. Um, and lots of other good stuff is coming in the works. So please like, subscribe. If you want to put these fish into a, a luxury deluxe apartment in the sky, uh, I have a Patreon page and all the money from that will go into the channel. So, uh, and these creatures I keep, of course. Uh, so I really appreciate that. That lets me keep things running, especially when I'm not monetizing right now. So through YouTube, that is. So, all right, guys, I'll, I'll give it to you. Enjoy the rest of your viewing experience on YouTube. Take care of each other. Take care of your critters. And have a great day. Keep on swimming.